Welcome to Fall Guys University. Today we are going to cover the map Stomping Grounds. In my opinion, this is the most difficult map to regularly qualify on. It's by far my lowest qualification rate percentage of any map, which is around 60%. To put that into perspective, there are some maps that have a 100% qualification rate on, and most maps are around a 90% qualification rate. So this map can be pretty brutal. This is a Season 5 map. It's a timed survival map. This is the first survival map of Fall Guys University. If you hit the slime, back to the lobby you go. There is no respawning. The time to last is 1 minute and 10 seconds, or 70 seconds. You can win a crown on this map if you are the lone survivor, or there can be no winner at all. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Stomping Ground is a fairly simple map to understand. There are three rhinos among yourself and other beans on a circular platform. There is a handrail around the perimeter with lily pads just outside the map. After 1 minute and 10 seconds, if you still haven't hit the slime, you qualify. Variants can include a different number of rhinos among obstacles both on and off the platform. This video won't be broken up into a beginner and expert section. It'll be different ways on how to survive along with each variant you can have. I'll break down various pros and cons of each strategy. The most important part of this map are the rhinos. The rhinos wander around the map they're seeing charging at players trying to knock them off. There are a few things that are noticeable about the Rhino targeting system. Most of the time, it prioritizes targets that are closer to them and that are fully on the ground. We'll come back to this later. The two main Rhino threats are charging and thrusting. The difference between the two is the distance you get hit and the quickness of the animation. A thrust will hit your bean a short distance where it will maybe fall over or slide a bean or two away. A charge will hit you in the air clean across the map. A Rhino will charge when it locks onto a player, lets out steam, and then charges. It will always move in a perfectly straight line and will continue until stopped by a another object. A rhino will thrust its horn without a pre-animated action at any beam that gets within an arm's length and it can thrust multiple times very quickly while moving and turning in circles. The only time it won't do this is when it's charging. You can also be targeted by more than one rhino at a time. The first strategy is running around the platform, dodging the rhinos. If you use this strategy, you want to stay close to the handrail and avoid the middle as much as possible. You can run into the middle if necessary, however, since there are three rhinos, it's impossible to keep your eyes on all three of them the entire time so you can get blindsided. If you stay near the edge, it's very possible to keep all three rhinos in your sight. By being able to keep the rhinos in your sight, you can react to them charging towards you as they have an animation windup. Even being able to see the rhinos and know that they're coming towards you, it can still be difficult to avoid a charging rhino 100% of the time. Two things that will help out. You can dodge by diving out of the way. The pro and con to this is you can dodge easier on the charge. However, if the rhino continues to target you, it can make it difficult to dodge the next charge. The other thing is to spam jump. When a rhino is in targeting mode, spam jumping will make it untarget you. I'm not absolutely positive as to why, as it sometimes will charge you when doing this and other times it won't. But it's obvious that the jumping does something to the targeting. My theory is a rhino will target you over a certain amount of time. If in this time it can keep targeting you, it will charge. There's something about being in the air at times that throws this off. Also, along the same lines, when you are spam jumping, the rhino won't target your movement as accurately. It's as if it's targeting where you jumped from instead of where you are in the air. I'm not 100% sure this is an actual fact, but more of an observation. When running around the platform, there is one more bit of knowledge that can be helpful. When you are running around the map, if the rhino is directly facing you, we will ask ourselves which way is it coming from. If it's coming from the left side, run right. If it's coming from the right side, run left. If the rhino charges you from the direct middle, keep running the same direction you are already running. This is not based on what direction your camera and bean are facing. It's based on the angle it's targeting you from. The railing acts as a partial barrier so you can cheat the angle. This also means if it continues to charge you again, it will continue to run into the barrier as long as you constantly keep running. Now this doesn't work when a rhino has targeted another bean or when you get pinched by two rhinos. In theory, if you can get all three rhinos to target you while running around the edge from the same direction, you could infinitely survive. Same goes with if three people were able to do this at the same time going in the same direction. This isn't very viable as the rhinos will eventually target other beans since there are usually 18 to 40 people on this map. But this could be something useful in unique situations. Another strategy is to stand on the platform and jump on a lily pad that is outside the map as a rhino charges. This strategy isn't a bad one to use, however, the hitbox of the rhinos will still allow you to get hit even with a perfect dive onto the lily. You can also have multiple rhinos target your area. So you dodge the first, but when you land back on the platform, rhino number two takes you out. Also when you hit a lily pad, if your jump is bad, you can hit the railing and fall right off. You can also hit the railing and fail to go over so the rhino taps you under the railing. You can hit the lily and go too high, hitting the smaller lily pad which sends you out toward the middle of the platform which we know is not recommended. So is there a foolproof strategy? The answer here is no, but there's one more thing we can do to help. You can do an infinite lily pad strat. You can still get hit by the rhinos here, but it's only in a few particular instances. By jump diving onto the lily pad and diving in a synchronized pattern, you can dive a lot of times over and over by staying outside the map. The timing here has to be exact, and it takes a lot of practice to get it down perfectly. The main thing here is the rhinos won't charge you as much, and if they do, as long as they don't camp directly on the edge, they won't affect you. There's two things to look out for. 
other people diving on your lily pad, which can body block you or ragdoll you, causing you to fall into the slime, or another person camping in front of the lily you are jumping on so the rhinos come directly at your spot. If either of these two happen, I try to strategically go to another lily pad. I myself will go back and forth on which strategy I mainly use, but I use a combination of various strategies. For newer players, I'd go with running around the map, staying near the edge, and diving when a rhino charges. As you get more comfortable with your mechanics, I'd spam jump as well to increase your survival rate. For more experienced players, I'd recommend staying near a lily pad and jumping onto the lily pad when a rhino charges. I'd recommend spam jumping to decrease a rhino's charge rate. Over time, as you get better, I'd then recommend practicing the lily pad infinite dive strategy. It's difficult to get down, but once you do it, it gives you a huge survival rate increase. Ideally, I'd recommend incorporating all of the strategies down as each one can be better in their own situation. Now let's look at some of the variants, bugs, and extra things that we haven't covered yet. The best variant of this map, for survival purposes, is when there is a spinning middle section. When this happens, run into the middle of the spinner. This part doesn't spin, and the treadmill section acts as a target stopper for the rhinos. They will often charge into the middle, but will be thrown off once they touch the moving floor. It's quite rare to get eliminated in this variant, as a rhino will hit you and knock you around, but due to the targeting getting thrown off, it won't keep going at you over and over. If it does, you usually have time to avoid it, or it will try to charge and get instantly interrupted. There can also be some fans that replace lily pads. These fans can be blowing vertically at an angle or horizontal and back to the middle. With the vertical fans, we try to see if we can get stuck in place in the stream, and after many failed attempts, we weren't able to do anything that worked. You can, however, land on top of a horizontal fan by jumping off of a lily pad and directing your beam to dive onto the fan. It's very difficult, but if you're able to do this, you're nearly guaranteed to qualify. The only things that can happen are another beam does this and pushes you off, or a rhino hits a beam to knock you off. I have yet to see either one happen, but it is at 100% foolproof, but we'll go with a 99.99% qualification rate. One final thing that can change about this level is there can be one or three rhinos. If there's one rhino, you should never die. You should be able to stay away from the rhino at all times, and utilizing the left and right targeting system should be applied here. If you don't know which way to run, stand in front of a lily pad and jump dive onto the lily pad when it charges. Let's look at the common ways to get eliminated in this map along with some bugs. I won't talk about all of them, but I will show all of them here with descriptions. A few bugs that can happen are you can get an elimination bug. You can get an elimination bug where you're on the platform and it just says you're eliminated and this can happen while you're bouncing on the lily pads. This is a rare bug but it does happen from time to time. You can respawn on the map by getting knocked too far out of the area. This is a known bug that happens on other maps as well. There's a bug that I like to call tooth it where your jumping and bouncing is much lower than usual. It's almost like you are in a high gravity area. There's also a spectator bug where none of the rhinos are moving and they won't affect you. Let's review. The rhinos work by targeting, showing an animation, and then charging. There are a few strategies to use. Run around and dodge, jump onto the lily pad when a rhino charges, or the infinite lily pad strat. Things you should avoid are the middle of the map and other beans. Now we'll watch a crazy clip with a very weird bug, and then you'll get to meet my pet rhino. Oh,